Hello, everyone, and welcome to a new episode of the format Keeping Up with the Ambassadors. We have a new host today. Hello, Noah. Hello. Good to have you here. It's an honor. And just for the new viewers, I'd like to remind you what this format is. So this is an opportunity for me, a Charney intern, to sort of interact and keep up with the, the ambassadors and that are members of this ambassador program, which is a collaboration between the Charney Center and the Eastern Mediterranean International School. And the idea that our founder, Tzili Charney, had was basically after students leave Emmis, that for those who don't know is um, peace focused boarding school in the Middle East that has international Palestinians and Israelis all living together. So the purpose of this program is sort of to have a network of alumni that collaborate even after graduation through different projects that promote our mission of peace and dialogue across the world. So Noah, you are will be becoming a new ambassador soon, which is exciting. So why don't you start by telling us a bit about who you are and what, what you're doing right now in life? Cool, thank you. Um, so I'm Noah, as Jeremy mentioned, and um, I just graduated MS in May, um, and I'm doing a gap year right now. So I'm kind of in between um, working and internships, and I just did a, a program um, by the China Resolution Center. Um, and I'm half Israeli, half German, just to <laughs> keep that in mind. And uh, yeah, I'm really excited to become an ambassador and kind of continue working with the Charney Center. Okay, that's great. It's an honor to welcome you to the Charney family. And how has it been being away from Emmis after graduation? It's, <laughs> difficult it's very question. difficult. I didn't, yeah, I didn't expect it because it was difficult being at Emmis in the first place, especially during those two years of COVID. I mean, we faced... And you also know about it. We faced a lot of challenges. So uh, it was dreading at some points, but it's even harder to be away from MS. And that's something really unexpected, but yeah, that's life. Yeah, I can relate to it. It it gets, I don't know if it gets easier. You just get more used to it, but <laughs> you'll, you'll still yeah. miss MS, but it, it's part yeah. of it. It's nice to see people again. And and okay, I think what, what would be very interesting to talk about with you is sort of this diplomacy program you did at the Florida Atlantic University, which is a Charney sponsored and organized program. And um, yeah, why don't you share a bit of like what the program was and how this experience was for you? Okay, so um, just to explain the program is, um, as you said, it's located uh, or not located, but it takes place at FAU, Florida Atlantic University. Um, and it's basically uh, a course, a university course that around like 70 people take. Mm -hmm. And the China Resolution Center program or the Lean China Diplomacy program kind of brings one MSR each year mm -hmm. to join that class. And everyone's being taught by this very cool professor, um, uh, Jeffrey Morton, and he's talking about diplomacy, and you kind of like practice negotiations and uh, prepare for an MEN conference that takes place in Washington, D.C. for like over a weekend, um, which happened November 6th um, this year or 4th. Uh, and um, yeah, and everyone kind of participates. So I did that program and I came uh, as an emissary to that university, uh, and I was part of that class for about a month until we did the competition. It's actually a competition where you can win like best delegate or honorable mention, all these things. And it was extremely exciting. I learned so much and I, I came into- I also heard you won. Your team yeah, won, right? Yeah, yeah. Good yeah. job. <laughs> Which was just the cherry on top. Uh, like I didn't expect it, but in the end, you know, uh, it's a nice feeling to um, come back and kind of have that on You're top. Rewarded. Yeah, exactly. But the experience itself was extremely rewarding. The class was great. And and Sili Charney, the head of the foundation, she was telling me how, uh, what a difference the pro the program is going to make. And I can really feel that afterwards now. So, yeah. Yeah. What is, if you were to like narrow it down a bit or give an example, what do you think is one specific thing that you've learned throughout this program? Hmm. I think... Um, because the entire, the diplomacy class was completely focused on negotiating 
like we had practices where we had to represent different countries and uh, in a crisis simulation, like for example, a simulation where North Korea declared war against South Korea and then people have to represent each other, like different countries. Plus the conference itself, we all had our own delegation, like I was Canada, for example. So you really have to learn how to negotiate and how to talk in an extremely diplomatic way. And that's something I never really experienced because the school we're from or the school we attended is, uh, it's very political. And because everyone's from like scattered all over the world, you kind of get like a heightened sense of identity. So you kind of have to represent yourself even more and voice your opinion even more because you have the like opportunity to. So the way, uh, nego not negotiations, but the way conversations and dialogue works is much different than in a diplomat, like in a diplomatic fashion where you learn how to talk and it's extremely difficult because uh, you really have to like kind of control yourself, but it's very rewarding in the end because it gives you so much, um, um, like a platform to talk to anyone really about anything you want while respecting the other person as well. So I think that's like the biggest thing I learned, if that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But it, yeah, it's a process, yeah. That's great to hear. And I can also imagine like, I know diplomacy often feels a bit like it's up in the air and it's very like yeah. Yeah. only for people in suits and government offices. Mm -hmm. But at then, like what what you're sharing with me, I can imagine how it's really applicable also to daily mm -hmm. life or even daily conflicts. Like if you're living with a roommate, like what is the best way to address a certain issue and tell them to okay. clean up more? Or if you're, I don't know, in a like job negotiation or application process, etc. It's like it's skills that can be applied to everyday life. So that's good mm -hmm. to hear. And I'm also curious to hear whether you think that like how you think your MS experienced sort of influenced you in the program and did you feel like you had any skills that were different from I think all the other students were Americans right so yeah. like if if you felt any any gap not that you were better at anything but like if mm -hmm. if you kept your MS experience and if it helped you in any way I think that's a really good question actually and I think um, I didn't realize it at that time but you know in hindsight or looking back I think MS gave me some kind of uh, I don't know, confidence or even tranquility in the way you articulate articulate yourself in this kind of setting because it is intimidating. And I mean, to everyone, it was also intimidating to me. But what I mean is that in MS, you're so used to confrontation in some ways and you're so used to like dialogue about really heavy, difficult political uh, situations and you have a lot of background knowledge considering global politics, not, I mean, whether you take the class or not, you do just have a, a broad I know, perspective on the world. And I really felt that because I did have some knowledge, um, political knowledge that MS gave me uh, that I could use during that conference. I mean, simulating the United Nations. Plus I had some sort of uh, trust in myself that I could pull it off because it's kind of part of your daily life at MS to be part of big, uh, conversations yeah. okay yeah that makes sense that makes a lot of sense and also i think just the experience of like already having lived for two people in such a diverse environment where everyone has That's different right. opinions and like a un negotiation is exactly that like whether it's really the opinion of the people doesn't matter but just like what they're advocating for is often even conflicting and there's like there's conflicts yeah. of interest etc yeah, yeah that's exactly the point because people have uh, difficulty. I mean, for me, it wasn't difficult to represent Canada because just based on this country's I don't know v values and it's it's uh, it's nice that I got Canada, but other people really had issues representing um, countries that they don't really know, like Tajikistan or something, and that uh, they wouldn't agree with their policies. Uh, and I, I don't know, like through MS, I feel like you have an appreciation for that. Uh, to represent each individual you know country yeah i also just think like for for personal development it's sort of a it's a good exercise to try to put yourself in someone else's shoes and not only like but to represent a country that like you deeply disagree with and yeah. i know and yeah. is a bit like a game but at the end that's also like real life and you will have to like sort of try to yeah. understand a perspective that you really disagree with disagree with 
It's, it's a bit like uh, peace simulation at yeah. MS because people encourage you or organizers, they encourage you to um, be part of the Palestinian delegation yeah. if you're Israeli and, and the Israeli delegation if you're Palestinian, just to have that feeling of representing something you actually don't usually yeah. agree with. And that's really difficult, but it's very, it makes a big difference. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I like the comparison with Charney's peace simulation because in a way that the concept behind it is very different, uh, very similar in terms of like using negotiation and diplomacy tool to then reach a, a goal that is sort of like good for all or yeah. like that, that benefits most people possible. So that's yeah. good. And I'm also curious to hear what is what is something that like you struggled with or what was something difficult throughout the process mm -hmm. or at the at the um, MUN conference itself? So I think, and you kind of already, already touched that um, aspect, one of the most challenging things for me is to be um, kind of having to embody this sort of environment because you have to wear Western business attire. You have to say, like, yeah. I yield my time back to the chair yeah. and you have, like, like three people elevated sitting and just observing you and you have to give formal speeches and people speak just for the sake of speaking and kind of show that they're present and it's something that feels sort of not so authentic also compared to peace simulation if I can make that connection again because in peace simulation it gives you much more of like it gives you the opportunity to basically speak in the way you want to speak and as long as you kind of represent the idea in a a respectful manner it's okay and you can play with ideas and everything and in MUN you have to work with the framework that they give you and you have to write resolutions and uh, know about resolutions and kind of you, there's not a lot of space to play with plus you have to be extremely extremely formal so to me it was always like it's not very effective it's not very efficient people don't really manage to do anything just because that's I mean there's this huge burden of having to shake hands all the time and kind of talk in a way where no one understands understands each other but after time I also realized after this weekend I realized how important that is as well because that way everyone's on the same level and everyone has to talk to each other the same way and it kind of gives you the opportunity to connect in a completely different way because you don't have a lot of prejudice that way and it really does make a big difference and I never really understood or noticed that so it was really nice to kind of yeah. um, be proven wrong okay I like the idea of like yeah in a way putting like equalizing everyone because you're right that like if it was more informal other factors such as like people who are friends already or like people who are more sociable maybe can have like a yeah like an easier time in sort of negotiating yeah. and by making it very formal, you're sort of like putting everyone on the same level. Mm -hmm. I like this perspective because often I've also done a bit of MUN and MS and around Israel, et cetera. And I did share your same feeling of feeling that like of having the perception that it's a bit forced or like not fully authentic mm -hmm. and it's a bit more like a theater play. And I got tired of it after a bit, but also like yeah. there's benefit in it as you're saying um and if like if you were to talk about like if you were to talk to a future student of the program maybe an emissary that is going there what is an advice you would give them what would have helped you um i mean the first advice i would give is to not think twice because i did think twice at some point if i should do it or not but if you're slightly interested in global politics which i think most emissaries are. Um, it's really, really like it, it's it's a really great program because you, not only do you learn how to be involved in current politics, like the topic we talked about was uh, international ad addressing international migration in our committee. Um, so it's very relevant, but also the course with the professor it gives you a lot of background knowledge on global politics. And it's just, I mean, it's amazing. So not think twice. <laughs> Uh, if you should do it or not and um, I think it's just the social aspect is kind of difficult in the beginning because you're the only one coming you know to that environment or like to the group of 70 people uh, or like a class of I don't know 15 people as an exchange student and that's kind of hard in the beginning but um, I don't like in the end that's the great part because you kind of 
are the one that observes observes everything from the outside and you have such a different perspective than most people mm -hmm. so i don't know if that's really advice but that's I mean, something that insights. <laughs> yeah insights like it's uh and looking back it's much more um valuable than i actually expected it to be yeah. and while i was doing it it was kind of difficult at times but um it's, it's, like it's that. worth it that's advice. it's worth it <laughs> yeah. i mean it's always like that i don't think I've, anyone yeah. would say that like the two years at ms were something easy like yeah, yeah. throughout experiences there's always like sure. tougher times it's just part of the process i guess mm -hmm. and so maybe to close it off what is a like what is a nice moment or a nice memory that you think you'll treasure of this experience I think actually just what I mentioned right now is like being thrown into a group of people that you don't know, but it, like they kind of have a cool connection with, with each other because it was like a mini MS to me. It was like it brought me back just one second, yeah. one fraction of a, of a moment to uh, feeling like I'm back in this kind of environment. Um, I Like I had roommates, for example, during the conference, like we shared a hotel room. There were four people in yeah. the room. They were super, super sweet. And I was like, I miss my roommates, <laughs> and I so so that was something I really uh, yeah, and and I had a really cool connection to the professor as well. He was extremely um, extremely uh, helpful. So all the kind of small connections you make with people and my committee partner too, they're really really valuable. Just because you're in that exceptional position and because no one really understands what's happening and where you're from and why you're doing this <laughs> and you have to explain it yourself, but it puts you in a really interesting position for yourself uh so i think that's always i'm always going to remember that in, in, in a certain way that it gave me like a glimpse of ms but also uh feeling uncomfortable while feeling sort of like you're learning something new every day so okay okay that's great to hear i'm happy you had such such like growing experience yeah and um yeah i think we're we're getting to the end of this lovely conversation but maybe I have one last question looking ahead. Uh, so now that you'll become a Chani ambassador, do you want to share like what what aspects of this experience you're looking forward to? Or maybe what are some of the ideas that you have mm -hmm. to be involved with the Charney Center? So first of all, I'm super happy that I get to stay in, in contact with the Charney Center. That was really important to me after graduating because you do get a sense of, I don't know, being... Like being far away or being physically, you know, separated from everyone is kind of like, uh, it's nice to have this sort of connection. Um, but I, like concerning what I would uh, want to do is I already talked to some people that are interested uh, and like also being alumni maybe or something. We could ex like ex expand the podcast project that Maria started last year. Uh, so that's definitely something like an idea uh, or I feel like uh, the Chinese newsletter always yeah. needs kind of new insights, especially yeah. from MSRs. So I'm definitely happy to um, write articles or whatever kind of uh, brings in new perspectives and opinions. And um, concerning like bigger projects, and well, we talked about this on the phone yeah. as well, the whole concept of having an alumni network that's bigger than only people that want to contribute to the Chinese center. Um, but like where you have sort of unions uh, in that sense, or like more people can be involved that way that have a connection to MS and to the Chani Center, um, that would be ideal for me. And if I find a way to work it out to create like a bigger alumni network, that would be amazing. So um, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> a lot of great ideas. And I'm yeah. excited to see them. And I also think you're right that like the, the most exciting part would be if we start seeing more collaboration amongst ambassadors. Yeah. So it's great if like, if also other people from your class will start getting involved and then maybe you can record a podcast together. Like we love at yeah. Charney to see some like more interactions between the ambassadors and this way the, the, the network can expand and also its impact and its influence can expand. So yeah, thank you for everyone who tuned in to listen and we hope you have a good day and stay updated. Bye. Bye, Noah. Have a good day. Bye.